Two years ago, I made a video creating a master board using more vintage items. And that video is very popular. So I thought, let's do an update of that. Let's make a couple of collage boards using some collage fodder. So I made these in a recent video. I will link that for you below. I also have some old jelly prints that I've never used because they're not great. This here is from a stencil and this is just a napkin. And then I also have some of my handmade tree stamp images. So I will also link a video for you where you see how I make my tree stamps. As a master board base, I'm going to use some 200 GSM cardstock because that way it will already be thick enough to use as ephemera. So why don't you grab some collage fodder and join me? So I picked papers that would all go together so I won't have to think a lot about what matches with, with what. And my aim is to put these down as randomly without thinking as possible, which is a huge challenge for someone like me who is a perfectionist. So let's see how this goes. And I'm going to adhere everything with my beloved Liquitex matte gel and a paintbrush. And if you're unsure about which glue to use for what, I have a whole video on that, which I will link for you in the description box as well. Obviously these pieces are all too big, so I will be tearing down quite a lot of these. Now the question is, do I first lay it out and then glue them on? No, no, because that won't be random. Okay, so I am going to start gluing down from the beginning. And I will grab things as randomly as possible. I really like this napkin. Are there any other perfectionists watching <laughs> that have similar issues to what I have? Oh no, what did I just do? I went over the beautiful shiny surface. That was not smart, Barbara. It is what it is. I can always glue something over it. Please let me know in the description box. It would be so nice if I wasn't alone in this. <laughs> but I think it definitely helps to have your pieces picked out beforehand. This is something that would be probably a lot of fun to do while watching TV or something. Oh, look, I'm getting purple here because I have, uh, what is it, Villainous Potion Distress Oxide there. Did not want that. Okay, let's add in some pop of colors like here. I'm already finding it hard to just tear this instead of just cutting these out. So now I don't want to put this to line up with this one here. I always want my papers staggered a little bit. This one is nice and bold. How about right there? Okay, what else? How about this one here? This is really something fun to do, I think, when you maybe don't have a lot of mojo to create a journal page, but you do want to do something creative. See, and my mind automatically thinks about threes, so I have my mustard yellow here, here, and I was going to put it here, but actually it doesn't matter because we'll be cutting this up anyway, so everything will be in a random position. That's something I need to keep in mind kind of hard not to think about the composition while you're doing this but that's actually the fun part because it's so relaxing to just glue these papers down and for once not having to think about where in your eyes the perfect placement is for something it's quite liberating I have to say <laughs> how about a pop of color right there smack in the middle we can add some of this as well. These sheets here are actually not made by me. I found these in a box 
at the Keeper of Memories workshop, our host, Christine, always has scraps from other artists in her box and you're always allowed to take some. You're obviously also allowed to leave some of your own. So that's always fun to get other people's scraps. How about this one? I really like how these came out. So this is also a handmade stamp and you can see how I made that in that collage video that I'm linking for you. Not collage video, collage photo video. I don't have a huge color variety. How about some of these ladders? Yeah. Whoops, I just tore that. I should not be so precious with this. I can always put more paint over it if I really need to, but I could also just put a focal point over it. So let's put this one aside and do the second one. This time I'm being smarter and using a fresh sheet of baking paper. One thing I have come to realize is that collage fodder always looks better when edges are torn away. Like a piece like this, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? And by the way, if you enjoy this color combination of black and this kind of blue and the mustard yellow, but you don't want to make your own collage fodder, you can find some linked below as a digital version. Maybe one thing I should mention is if you put glue over your collage fodder like I am now, please make sure that your collage fodder is made with acrylic paints and not with distress oxides because otherwise everything will smear. Once they have both dried, I can cut the edges with my paper trimmer or of course you can just use scissors as well. I'm going to be brave and cut these blind, meaning I'm going to turn these around and not look where it's cutting. <laughs> very, very challenging for me. I do, of course, want to think about what can I make out of the pieces that I'm cutting now. So I don't want to cut like tiny pieces unless I have an idea of what to do with those. So I'm going to stick to fairly large pieces, which will be easy to use. I know I want one of these to be a pocket in my planner, in this one right here. So I do want to have a size that's going to work for like a full page. So I'll have to cut it a bit shorter and I have to keep in mind how wide it can be. And then I could just make two belly bands out of this one. Let's do the second one. This is quite nerve-wracking. How about I do some triangular tuck spots? So for that I need pieces that are more or less square. And then I'll just cut these triangular shapes. Let's do two more of those. Then I want some pockets. I'll leave this one as it is. And I'll cut this one in half to make two smaller pockets. So let's have a look at these. This is so exciting. This is the best part, of course. Oh, I love this one. This one, I guess, was the big pocket. Okay. My two belly bands. Yep. This one, I'm not sure. I could use it, of course, as collage fodder. Then I have four triangular tuck spots. Oh, these are so fun. I love these. There's another pocket. 
and these can be used either as journaling cards or as pockets these look so fun i'm so happy i did this for this one i'm going to make a notch because it's going to be a pocket so i'm just using my envelope punch board like that and then for this one i'm going to use my one and a half inch circle punch and also make a notch oh it doesn't want to go through okay this is not working i have a circular die so i'll do that with my die cut machine instead okay i just ran that through Oh, I think I know why it didn't punch through. It's because I think this paper is not completely dry yet. That is one big hole, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> and even this cutout piece is a very fun collage piece. And just in case you don't want to put together your own master board, I'll make a digital with those that I can, which don't have any copyright prints on them. For example, I cannot copy this one because this one here has a Tim Holtz stencil. This, this stencil here is from PM Artist Studio. This is the Tim Holtz stencil, so I cannot. But these, I can add this one, this one, this one. These tuck spots I can put there as well because these are all handmade stamps. So you can find that link down below as well. Next, I'm going to ink these up and I'll use my Walnut Stain Distressed Oxide to do that. So I want to use something from here for my May planner signature. So maybe one of these two pockets. I think the last page here is empty. right here so i was thinking about this one. Oh yeah that is just perfect so the first thing i want to do is take this to my sewing machine and stitch around here so here's what that looks like i decided to go around the top of the pocket as well and before i glue this down i'm going to think about what else i want to add to the pocket i could just leave it like this i could just add a quote but I want to see if some of my ephemera would match from my kit for May, which is a scrapbooking kit. So maybe you have some vintage photos because I think the contrast with the modern and the colorful is great with vintage images. So if you want these in particular, then you can find these linked below as well. Let's just see. These are obviously too big, but I can, of course, cut around them. So fun. She's perfect, isn't she? I love her there. I will trim that down a little bit. Oh, that's so cute. Let's re-ink that edge. And then I can just go ahead and sew that right onto my pocket. I decided to leave the top open here so that can also be a pocket. I should have added a notch there, but that's too late now. And remember, we have this little strip here. <laughs> we could add that here. Maybe round the corners. Then let's ink that up as well. So we could just make this into a fun tag by adding a little hole and an eyelet on top. And then let's add some shockingly bright yellow on the top here. <laughs> let's cut this in half because this is too wide. Cute! <laughs> and on the back, I could write... For example, don't overthink it. 
smiley face. <laughs> so that's a good reminder for me. So we'll stick that in here. Let's glue it down. And I can also add the word vintage, which is in that same ephemera kit. I love this. And then I have a page here. We could add a belly band on one side. So we have these two. Let's take this one. Let's cut it off here. Okay. But because this paper is quite flimsy in comparison the, to the stiff cardstock, I think I want to back this with something to just make the whole piece a little more sturdy. And for that, we could use one of these two to make a pocket. So let's take this one. And again, I will have to cut this down just a little bit. Then I'll make a notch in it again using my envelope punch board. By the way, you can also get punches that have these kind of notches. I don't have one, so that's why I'm using this. So you don't have to get this if you just want the notches. Again, I stitched around this with my sewing machine and I'm going to adhere it to my page. And then I can add my belly band on this side. And on this one, I could put one of my handmade stamps. So I'll cut this tree out. Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> you can't really see it because it's the same color. Yeah, I did not think that one through. Maybe it works on this one here. Yep, I see that working. I just need to cut this piece out as well. I just saw this piece that we cut off before from our belly band. And actually, I think that would go really cute underneath the tree. So hopefully I can still lift this. Yes. So I'll cut off a part. By the way, I love how that yellow peeks out here. <laughs> so this one is done in my eyes. And I want something to put on this belly band. So I rummaged through my little basket of all kinds of goodies. And I found my feather. This is from a Tim Holtz die cut set, which I will link for you below. And I added a kind of a rust treatment to it, which didn't really come out as planned, but it's actually really nice here. But what I think it needs underneath is some gold thread. These threads are a bit difficult to bunch up because they want to stay all nice and smooth. Yeah. I know you couldn't really see that, but yeah, that did look good. Why did I put it so far down? No, it's supposed to be in the middle. Okay, do you see it there? And I feel like this one needs some white splatters. So here's my thinned down gesso. And this one needs them as well. Of course it does. <laughs> this time I will make these more into craters. Let's clamp that down to get an even surface. Let's add some here as well. I 
So this time I only dried these partially and now I'm going to take a kitchen towel and press onto these splatters so that we get these fun craters. You see those? These are so cute. I love this effect. So I have lots more to play with at another time. But I hope this gave you some ideas of what you can do. So have fun with this. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.